one thing that I hope we can achieve, it is to uh, create an environment where, where our employees can come in here and realize their potential. It's a wild ride. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most sensational and consequential scandals that rocked the corporate world. Any one of us could be put in those situations. He's a former employee, it could be me. I was shocked. Number 20, Waste Management's Accounting Fraud. About 30 years after its founding, Texas-based waste management found itself in the crosshairs of the SEC. After decades of rapid growth, the company's stock price had begun to stall. To sustain their expansion, executives resorted to accounting fraud, artificially inflating their profits by $1.7 billion. These unethical practices enriched the top brass at waste management with bonuses and perks, while defrauding their shareholders of over $6 billion. The accounting firm Arthur Anderson, notorious for its involvement in the Enron scandal, which we'll get to later, had also assisted waste management in covering up the fraud. The firm paid an unprecedented $7 million penalty, while waste management coughed up over $450 million to settle a class action lawsuit by its shareholders. Number 19, Siemens Greek Bribery Scandal. International sporting events like the Olympics and the World Cup are magnets for greedy individuals and corporations. The 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, Greece were no exception. In the years leading up to the Games, Siemens AG, a huge German telecoms conglomerate, saw the opportunity to make mountains of money. The company allegedly bribed a number of Greek officials up to 100 million euros in order to secure lucrative telecommunications contracts. It's a difficult case in a certain way, because it has very strong international implications, because it poses an entire series of legal problems concerning possible bribes abroad. This scandal rocked the small Mediterranean country and resulted in the indictment of several Greek officials, although most were acquitted in 2022. It was the first domino in a series of corruption scandals, shattering confidence in the Greek government and triggering over a decade of political instability. Number 18, Barclays and the LIBOR scandal. Financial investigations in the post-Great Recession era revealed shocking amounts of corruption across multiple sectors, particularly in banking. A 2012 investigation into the London Interbank Offered Rate, or LIBOR, unearthed widespread market manipulation. LIBOR represents a set of interest rates based on submissions by big international banks. As it turns out, those banks, led by Barclays, colluded to manipulate those interest rates. And by doing so, they increased profits and mitigated losses on derivative trading. After protracted negotiations with financial regulators in the UK and the US, the British bank was forced to pay nearly $550 million in fines and restitution. So the suggestion that LIBOR may have been manipulated could already have caused very serious consequences. In the years that followed, other banks like UBS and RBS would face similar consequences. Even what the SFA put out shows that it was systemic at UBS, that many dozens of people knew about it, that the emails were flying around without very, very without anybody really caring that I think that anybody would read these emails one day. Number 17, Parmalat. Parmalat began as a small family Italian farm in 1961. By the end of the 20th century, it had over 200 subsidiaries in nearly 50 countries. Dealing with financial headwinds in 1990, they turned to white-collar crime under the leadership of founder Callisto Tansi. Parmalat engaged in various forms of fraud and money laundering. They created fake transactions through double billing to inflate their profits, then leveraged these as collateral to borrow money from banks. Additionally, they colluded with investment bankers and auditors to hide their debt from investors. I think this is going to make people hesitant about dealing with Italian companies. When auditor Deloitte & Touch refused to endorse Parmalat's financial statements in November 2003, the writing was on the wall. A month later, the company was declared insolvent and Tansi was arrested. Number 16, Briex Gold Mining Scandal. The mining arm of this Canadian company shot to prominence in 1995 when it was claimed it had discovered a huge gold store in Indonesia. This stock <clears throat> will do well and we can't lose. Not true. We lost everything. The resulting increase in stock price saw Briex Minerals Limited make over six billion in Canadian dollars. But the bottom line was that it was all based on a lie perpetuated by geologist Michael de Guzman. The fraud came to light when de Guzman reportedly took his own life in March of 1997. Further analysis of the mining site revealed there to be insignificant amounts of gold, which ultimately sent the company into bankruptcy. 
Although little money was recovered for those who were misled, the scandal did result in significant changes to Canadian legislation with respect to professional geology. In spite of class action lawsuits, not one investor has ever been compensated. A harsh reality for thousands of ordinary people who invested their life savings in BREEX. Number 15. Lance Armstrong and the Livestrong Foundation it's hard to picture today, but Lance Armstrong was once an international sporting icon. Armstrong is coming with an incredible rush, and Clothen has realized it too late. Is there any stopping Lance Armstrong in this Tour de France? And the answer is no. The cyclist's story was inspirational. He overcame testicular cancer to win the Tour de France seven years running. His nonprofit, then known as the Lance Armstrong Foundation, raised $400 million to help cancer patients, mostly through their signature yellow wristbands. There was only one problem. It was a nonprofit empire based on lies. Armstrong had admittedly used performance-enhancing drugs for years and encouraged other cyclists to do so. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. Yes or no? was one of those banned substances, EPO. Yes. He was stripped of his Tour de France titles and kicked out of the company, which rebranded as the Livestrong Foundation. Despite cutting ties, Livestrong lost many of their corporate sponsorships and has spent a decade trying to rebuild. Number 14, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. The major oil company known as BP may already have had a famously poor environmental record, but this disaster was the worst in the history of the petroleum industry. This isn't a terribly difficult calculation to perform. So for some reason they didn't perform it or they didn't know how to perform it. 11 people were killed in the initial explosion of the Deepwater Horizon oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico in 2010. But humans and animals continue to feel the detrimental effects of 210 million U.S. gallons of oil flowing into the sea. The company was hit with charges that amounted to $20.8 billion in fines for their gross negligence and willful misconduct. However, whether this amount of money is capable of reversing the environmental damage remains to be seen. The legacy of Deepwater Horizon will be to show how important science is in making decisions that help society meet these challenges and keep this region vital and safe and resilient for generations to come. Number 13, the Freddie Mac home financial scandal. If the housing market crash were a mining disaster, the Freddie Mac scandal was the canary in the coal mine. Freddie Mac is a federally backed mortgage lender based in Virginia. Four years before the collapse of the entire industry, it was discovered that Freddie Mac lied about billions in earnings. As with many companies on this list, Freddie Mac's leaders felt pressured to reflect impressive financial profits. Multiple executives, including the CEO, COO, and CFO were in on the scheme, colluding to inflate the company's earnings. The SEC investigation led to a consent decree, forcing Freddie Mac to reorganize their accounting practices. They were also forced to pay a fine of $125 million. They had one persona that they presented to investors which said, we're low risk, we're not doing this, we're not doing that. On the other hand, they would go to the government and say, we're doing affordable housing and higher risk loans and we are getting credit for that. Number 12, FTX. I think it's fair to say that by any anyone's life, this is one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. The rise and fall of Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX was one of the biggest stories of 2020. Bankman-Fried founded the cryptocurrency exchange in 2019 and rode the wave to immense wealth. Within three years, he had bought the naming rights to the Miami Heat's arena. However, Bankman-Fried proved to be a less than reliable business person. He misled investors, lied to the government, and secretly diverted customer money into a different firm, Alameda Research. There are a lot of cases where that's actually explicitly part of the program's and that are but happening not, not here. Are here it says that the digital assets may not be loaned to FTX trading. They can't be loaned out. I... These illegal practices didn't last long. Bankman Freed was arrested and put on trial, during which the scope of his fraud was revealed. He had lost billions of dollars, ruining his investors and customers alike. FTX eventually filed for bankruptcy, and Bankman Freed was convicted of multiple criminal counts, including fraud and money laundering. Number 11, the Bhopal disaster. The death toll of this 1984 disaster in India is claimed to be more than 16,000. 
but it's unknown how many people actually suffered as a result of the gas leak at the Union Carbide Indian Limited Pesticide Plant. Former Union Carbide Corporation CEO Warren Anderson was charged with manslaughter by Bhopal authorities, but never had to answer for the disaster as the U.S. refused to extradite him. I am confident that the victims can be fairly and equitably compensated without a material adverse effect on the financial condition of Union Carbide Corporation. In 1989, $470 million was paid by UCC to settle litigation, but a lawsuit seeking further compensation for crimes against humanity was dismissed in 2012. Anderson died two years later, with the Indian public still feeling as though justice had not been served. Number 10. Tyco International Theft Dennis Kozlowski and Mark H. Swartz were infamous for their extravagant lifestyles that were built through the success of the security systems company known as Tyco International Limited. And in 2002, they were accused of stealing over $150 million from the business. The then CEO and then CFO contended that the board had authorized these payments as bonuses. The prosecution accused Kozlowski of granting himself unauthorized bonuses and running hundreds of millions of dollars worth of personal expenses through interest-free Tyco loan program. The following trial was something of a sham, but eventually both men were sentenced to up to 25 years in prison during a retrial. Due to the duo's falsification of records, Tyco was forced to pay almost $3 billion to defrauded and likely very angry investors. Number 9. The FIFA Corruption Case the governing body for the most popular sport in the world has been dogged by constant accusations of corruption. But in 2015, these suspicions were confirmed. 18 individuals were indicted on charges including money laundering and wire fraud. We are here to announce the unsealing of charges and the arrest of individuals as part of our long-running investigation into bribery and corruption in the world of organized soccer. An investigation by the FBI uncovered allegations that several FIFA officials had collected millions of dollars in bribes to award media and marketing rights for the games. $150 million in bribes were being paid uh, to these officials, including a, a a U.S. sportswear company that paid money to sponsor the Brazilian Soccer Federation. So there's a lot here going on, including a, a separate investigation now being done by the Swiss. There was also considerable evidence that similar bribery of top officials had been key in deciding what countries got to host the World Cup tournaments. As a result of the scandal, then FIFA president Zepp Blatter was suspended from the organization and subsequently issued an eight-year ban from any of their activities. Number eight, Theranos and the blood testing illusion. The twisted lies and warped reality of Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes became the subject of multiple true crime documentaries. Her insane grift became a pop culture phenomenon, fascinating millions. Holmes was a charismatic figure, using her charm to convince top investors and spokespeople of her technical brilliance. She was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People. Wired called her work mind-blowing. She claimed to have invented revolutionary medical technology, a one-stop analysis machine for blood testing known as the Edison. It was an invention that would change the face of medicine. It was also a complete sham, sold on lies bought by business titans, former presidents, and cabinet secretaries alike. Because at the end of the day, I, I wouldn't run them on myself. I wouldn't run them on my family members. And it just didn't make sense that Internally, we had so little faith in these tests, but we're still resulting them on patients. Holmes falsified data and kept her lies up until her arrest. She was convicted of fraud in 2022 and sentenced to 11 years in prison. Number seven, Facebook data privacy scandal. After Donald Trump won the 2016 presidential election, a number of Russia-related scandals floated to the surface of public consciousness. One of the largest broke in 2018, Personal data of about 87 million Facebook users had been obtained illegally by the political consultant firm Cambridge Analytica. They say it was their data and their research that gave President Trump the winning margin. A whistleblower from the firm confirmed that this data was shared with Russia. Mark Zuckerberg faced congressional inquiries in the US and Europe about Facebook's conduct on this matter. The company later admitted that they knew about Cambridge Analytica's actions and had done nothing to stop them. The problem was the company was not authorized to have this data, which they got through a Facebook app. This did not help with privacy concerns. As a result, Facebook's share price plummeted, and they eventually rebranded as Meta, partly to shake off the scandal. In 2022, Meta agreed to a $725 million settlement. 
Number 6. Bernie Madoff's Ponzi Scheme Charles Ponzi was an Italian businessman who invented the most famous fraud scheme in history. He would lure people to invest in a product with promises of massive profits. But there is no product in a Ponzi scheme. New investors just pay off the old ones. Years after Ponzi's death, Bernie Madoff would perfect his setup. Madoff spent decades building a reputation as one of the most successful financiers in the world. He also orchestrated the most elaborate Ponzi scheme in history, swindling thousands of investors of an estimated $65 billion. Prosecutors claim that he lost some investors' money on bad trades. Then he tried to hide it all by replacing some of that with cash from new investors who were coming in. When his scheme collapsed, he had destroyed numerous businesses and families, including his own. In 2009, Madoff received a sentence of 150 years in prison and forfeited $170 billion in restitution. I asked him if he was depressed and he said, yes, but the fact that I am functioning troubles me a great deal. You can't do what I've done without guilt. Number 5. The Lehman Brothers Bankruptcy The 2008 financial crisis was a tough time for reckless investment banks, as Bear Stearns found out. But the Lehman Brothers collapse was the economic event's greatest victim. Lehman also had a hand in securing America's high-risk subprime mortgages, believing that the popularity and sheer volume of those loans would net huge gains. But it didn't. The financial services firm's leveraging of borrowed money caused the biggest bankruptcy in U.S. history in 2008. It didn't take long for the company to fizzle out of existence in a rapid decline that enhanced the economic devastation of the ongoing crisis. News emerged that executives increased their pay just before the bankruptcy, and that accounts had been altered to hide the bank's poor financial position. This case stands as the perfect example of the culture of excess causing worldwide suffering for billions of people. This is a pain that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Number 4. The Health South Accounting Scandal with enough greed, fraudsters can turn any industry into a criminal enterprise. In 1986, Aaron Beam and Richard Scrushy took their chain of rehabilitation hospitals, HealthSouth Corporation, public after enticing Wall Street with promises of substantial growth. Over the next decade, HealthSouth expanded nationwide, boasting 40,000 employees and landing in the Fortune 500. As growth waned, however, Scrushy turned to fraud. He and his executives cooked the books and massively inflated the company's earnings. So does his top financial officers committed the fraud without his knowledge. You have to rely, you have to trust people. You have to believe, you have to delegate. I mean, you hire them, you pay them good salaries, you expect them to do the right thing. Additionally, Scrushy sold $75 million in shares right before an anti-fraud law went into effect. He faced two criminal trials in the state of Alabama before being convicted and sentenced to nearly seven years in prison. He was eventually ordered to pay almost $3 billion in damages. Number 3. The WorldCom Accounting Fraud WorldCom Incorporated executives Scott D. Sullivan and David F. Myers were charged with seven counts of securities fraud. This telecommunication corporation held the record for the biggest bankruptcy in 2002 before the Lehman Brothers collapse took its unwanted title six years later. Throughout the early 2000s, the company was utilizing a complex scheme of adjusting its books to hide the considerable losses. By 2003, it's thought that their total assets had been fraudulently inflated by around $11 billion. In 2005, former CEO Bernard Ebers was convicted of various types of fraud that would keep him behind bars for 25 years, a sentence many would say was befitting someone who deceived so many. Number two, the Volkswagen emission scandal. Um, but the CEO, you know, addressing some 2,000 employees um, and speaking publicly made no bones about it. This is going to be painful and it's going to be complicated. In this case of fraud, it was discovered that one of the biggest car manufacturers in the world was using software to falsify emission test results, with an estimated 11 million of its vehicles being affected. It was eventually revealed that the company had installed illegal software in the cars that allowed them to bypass environmental regulations. In doing so, they violated the Clean Air Act, potentially putting human lives at risk. In other words, there was no way this was accidental because the software was designed very carefully to detect an official emissions test. These revelations had implications all over the world, with Volkswagen receiving hefty fines in multiple countries. In total, the company paid over $33 billion to clear off these fines, as well as financial settlements and buyback costs. However, the actual effects of this scandal remain unknown. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. 
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Enron Scandal In the space of a month or so, this energy giant went from being one of the biggest companies in the world to bankrupt. What set the scandal apart from the relatively common instances of accounting fraud were the failures of accounting firm Arthur Anderson LLP, which neglected to report Enron's crimes and led to the firm's own dissolution. I don't understand how upper management would allow. It's because Enron actually used the same estimates in their earning reports, which magically transformed themselves into revenue, which translates directly into higher stock prices for investors. And higher bonuses and stock option payouts for execs. Everybody wins. The sheer scale of Enron's fraudulent activity is difficult to comprehend, as it allowed the business to pretend it was running at $100 billion in revenues through the use of loopholes and poor financial reporting. Many critics believed that such recklessness was particularly abhorrent for an energy company, and that those involved deserved their harsh sentences. Because like most things that end terribly, it didn't start out that way. It started with a lot of people who thought they were changing the world, and over time they became victims of their own hubris, victims of their own greed. Step into the dark side of the corporate world and let us know your thoughts on these corporate scandals in the comments below. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed for lack of a better word, is good. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.